Hello, welcome back. Today we are planting soft fruit bushes here in the food forest. Now, as you may be able to see, this area behind me, we've got the chickens, and this area is where they were penned in uh, for the last couple of months. And as you can see, they have decimated the grass. So I'm gonna make the most of that and get some of these berries planted in this bit here. Um, and we're gonna just keep moving their area around. Every time they clear an area, we'll just move them around. Uh, so through the winter, a lot of the time, they've been just completely free ranging in this, in this whole field. Um, and they're not very happy that they're now uh, away in the pen. Um, but I do just have to accept that once we want to plant things, I either have to keep the chickens contained or I have to protect the thing that I've planted. So um, from here on out, a bit more controlled about where the chickens go. We'll see how that goes. Quick side note on the chickens, we just got them a new feed at one of those where you have, they have to stand on the panel thing to open the feeder because getting some rodent issues. So we were not feeding them in the feeder because the rodents were just coming in the night and eating it. Uh, so we were just kind of feeding them by hand. Now one of the farms over there always has loads of crows on their trees and since we've been feeding the chickens out and about we're getting the crows over here. So we stopped feeding them out in the open and now we've got this hopefully rodent proof feeder so uh, I'll, I'll let you know if we like it and if we stop feeding the local rodent population. In here we've got some gooseberries, they're the prick prickly ones, then I've got some red currants and some joster berries. So I'm gonna get as many as reasonably fits in this space here and then otherwise we'll have to go find a new spot for them further down. I think what I might do is put the gooseberries up here just because when the chickens are out they wait for us at this gate which means they're in this area more than they are the rest of the field. So if I put the more prickly ones I'm not gonna let the chickens out until they're established um, or if I do I'll fence these around so they can't go tearing them up when they're young but I'm hoping that later on a few years down the line these will be established enough and prickly enough that the chickens won't cause them too much damage when they're just hanging out in the same area. Ordinarily, when I'm planting something new, I would add compost into the hole, but where the chickens have been on this area, it's quite rich here. So I think I'll just plant it as it is, and then I will keep an eye on it, and if it needs feeding, I'll feed it, but otherwise... That's okay. one. Gooseberries are reasonably heavy feeders, so I am leaving a nice space on this side of them and on the other side of them, and I'm going to plant some nitrogen fixes in this area with them in the very near future. So hopefully I am reducing my need to come in and, you know, physically look after them and give them what they need. I'm just going to plant the things that will do it for me. Forest gardening. I just come across this, which may look like some green smush. But this is the base of a celery that I literally I brought it out here to feed it to the chickens when I chopped all that celery back before Christmas when we had that when we had that frost, and uh, it was literally just a stump about maybe a half an inch thick of the base of a celery plant, and it's just been sat out on the ground and it's trying to grow. How cool is that? Anyway, back to it. <laughs>
Okay, well that was the easy bit because this area has already been cleared by the chickens. The rest of these are going out in an area that's not already been cleared. So what I'm gonna have to do is dig a hole, try and clear as much of the sort of plant matter, the roots and things. There's a lot of grasses and docks, and nettles and things in here. So I'm gonna have to try and clear an area of roots. Um, and then I'm gonna plant these in and then I will layer some soil back on top of them. And then I'm gonna use these cardboard boxes uh, as a light obscuring layer and then I'm going to throw some mulch on top of those to keep them down and hope that that buys these new bushes a year or so of not too much competition from surrounding weeds so they can get themselves nice and established and hopefully once they do and we grow more things they introduce some ground cover when the season starts up again uh, and then there'll be enough competition out here that the grass will recede over time um, but otherwise I'm just gonna have to take every little battle as it comes. You know, this is never gonna be a completely grass-free place for me to just plant straight into, that's a dream world. So I'm just gonna have to battle it back bit by bit every time I wanna plant something new. And I figure the more we keep doing that, especially if I try and do it in blocks so that an area becomes filled with something else other than grass. When you've got one plant surrounded by grass and then another plant surrounded by grass, then it's quite difficult to keep on top of it. Whereas if I sort of clear areas and plant that area up, then I think it's reasonable that I might actually be able to achieve that. So let's go find a spot for these. Okay, so I'm using this area here to put some of these bushes in. Now that, if you watch previous videos, I'll turn the camera on in a second. We've got our herb spirals and some planted beds just over there. And I don't know if you can see on the video, but there's a sort of pathway cut in here. So I want to try and keep that path. So I'm thinking what I'll do is line these bushes along this path and that will also be a bit of a barrier for that planted area where I'm gonna have herbs and strawberries and things like that in there. So we've also got a couple of apples bordering this bit as well. So I'm gonna put these sort of between these apple trees. But we'll see how difficult this is to dig. <laughs> bad up here. I think that side has got way more like nettles and brambles over by that hedge. This one in the bit more out in the middle of the field it's mostly just grass and plantains and a bit of buttercup so I think it should be easier to manage down this end. Right, just to show you the area we're in this is an apple tree here and then as you come around here you've got some beds ready to be planted and then another apple tree here so we'll be of making a bit of a semicircle on the outside of this section with these between these two apple trees. I hope that makes sense. just to give them a little boost in the early days. And then as I say, I'm gonna use that cardboard to place around each of them. And then I'll throw some mulch on top to try and keep a bigger radius of this grass out um, than just this hole that I've dug.
so right i've run out of cardboard so i'm gonna have to go find a bit more and then i'll cover it all up with mulch this is not the textbook nor the prettiest way of doing things but i'm a firm believer in using what i've got um if i tried to start this whole food forest buying new stuff in it would cost me thousands and that's just <laughs> not possible you know I've, I've been saving up my cardboard boxes for this very reason um and i will just make use of what i've got and i'm gonna do the best i can with it because because that's what we can do yeah i'm not saying that i will never spend money on this i will and i do obviously i bought these plants um, and i bought all the trees I just want to be mindful of where I'm spending the money when I actually need to. Every bit I spend on plants, I can't spend on something else. And you know, so the same is true for everything else. So I just try to be mindful um, of what I'm spending. At the end of the day, we're on three acres here and we're two people and two dogs and a cat and a lot of chickens. So we should be able to build something sustainable here. We'll just keep building it up as we go. I'm okay with that. I'm just using these bits of turf that I've dug up for this just to uh, hold these down before I get them out later on top so it doesn't all fly away. Oh, believe it or not it's getting dark i hate winter honestly i cannot wait till the days get longer but nonetheless i've got four gooseberries out planted by the chickens i've got this set of five red currants out here they need another couple of barrows worth of mulch over that but i'll finish that up in a moment so i didn't get the just berries out today but i will do something very similar to what i've done here probably on the other side of this little circle area where i'm going to be doing some more managed planting in the next couple of years it'll be all perennial stuff so my i'll be planting with a view to it not being quite so needy on my time but for the next couple of years i'm going to focus on this area really plant it out heavily so that this middle bit of this food forest starts to really fight back against all the grass and we start getting loads of different varieties in here i'll get this finished off i will get the just berries in next time i'm out here but all in all pretty good progress on the food forest today so thank you very much for joining me cheers guys <laughs> <laughs>